he's not fully honest now. He he knows that what he says is basically BS, but he still says what he says. It's not easy being a flat earther, I'll be honest. It's not. You want to keep calling me out and calling me names and calling me dishonest and a troll or a liar or this and that. I'm going to bite back eventually. What's up, everybody? I'm back, and today I'm speaking with former flat earther, Rachie Five Zeros. If you don't know Rachie, for years she posted videos to YouTube in support of the flat earth theory and was a popular member of the flat earth community. Then, about eight months ago, her videos began challenging the flat earth claims and questioning the honesty of many prominent flat earthers. In our conversation, Rachie provides some incredible insight into the mind of a flat earther, including how she came to believe the earth was flat, the prevalence of the Dunning-Kruger effect in the flat earth community, how she viewed Globers or anti-flat earthers, how she came to realize she was wrong, the change in her relationships with flat earthers once she began challenging them, and of course, her thoughts on the degree of dishonesty of a few specific prominent flat earthers. We cover a lot, and there are chapters in the description in case you'd like to skip around. Big thank you to Rachie for chatting with me. She was really an open book here. It's not always easy to admit when you're wrong, even to yourself, let alone discuss it so openly and candidly on the internet. If you'd like to check out her content, and I definitely suggest you do, there will be a link to her channel in the description below. If you'd like to see more conversations like this, let me know by hitting those like and subscribe buttons and check out my other videos. I do have another one coming soon. It's a conversation with Dave McKeegan, so keep an eye out for that. All right, with all that said, here's my conversation with Rachie Five Zeros. I hope you enjoy. All right, so I am here with Rachie, Rachie Five Zeros to be specific. Rachie, how are you? Thanks for joining me. Not too bad. Thank you. How are yourself? I'm doing well. All right, first question. How much are they paying you to shill for the globe? Absolutely zero. I wish they was paying me. <laughs> you didn't get paid off to change sides? I'm sure, although I have been told I've been paid off, especially by the wolf pack. But no, I haven't been paid off. I wish. <laughs> I'm really impressed by the fact that you sought the truth and you were able to admit you were wrong. Are you 100% convinced now we're on a globe or where do you live in your confidence? A hundred percent. It's the, it's a goal. Definitely. How about when you were a flat earther, how confident were you in your belief of the earth was flat? I'd say about 90%, but I always kept an open mind. Even now as a globe, I'd always keep an open mind in case somehow it manages to look like a globe, but isn't a globe. But yeah, I'm definitely convinced it's a globe more than I ever was flat earth because everything, all the evidence like matches a globe. You didn't always feel that way though. We'll get to that in a second, but. I was wondering, what is your educational background? Did you have a science background? Were you a strong science student? I only ever got to GCSEs. I started A-levels, but I never completed them due to, you know, life. Yeah, only GCSEs, my background, basically. Is that high school? High school, yeah. High school, okay. Well, since then, we've improved drastically. I think you, you received a lot of criticism early on in your videos about your lack of understanding of, of how science works and physics and all this and that, but... Did you study physics since then in order to prove or to discover what you want about the shape of the earth? Or did you learn it along the way by watching videos of flat earthers or globers? How did you learn so much in such a short time about physics? Through research, like the flat earther side, do your own research, and through globers and things like that, and different things online where they teach you the, the maths and the physics about it. And it makes more sense going through that and then learning like that like honestly I learned more out of school than I ever did in school although I got good grades in school like I got a double b for um physics yeah I learned more out of school than I ever did in school so obviously you've been studying and and learning lately yeah definitely and a lot of people helped me along the way as well you did a decent amount of experiments early on because you were really trying to see what was true for yourself. However, most of the results in the beginning, at least of your experiments led you to conclude that it was evidence against the globe. Is that correct? And how did that happen? Well, I wouldn't say the experiments led me to um, evidence against the globe. It was more misunderstandings and not understanding the scientific rigor and the variables and things like that. So there's different things that I did, but it didn't necessarily conclude that the globe wasn't true or that what the globe says isn't true. It's just that there's a lot of misunderstandings around the science. And like you don't, if you don't understand the variables either, then you don't understand 
how those variables can affect certain results that you seem to get. You did a video, I think it was a recent video, couldn't have been that old because you were criticizing flat Toads experiment involving the orange. And it was, yeah. it was a great point you made that he, there was another variable he was not considering whether it was on purpose or not. Well, we can get into that later, but so you think your experiments were just flawed? Yeah, like I did the whole Y test, for example, but there was different things I did in that. And actually, I did mean to revisit that because at one point I had the radiator on, which obviously creates hot air. And then I had the door open and it was like winter, so then it's cold air. And different things like that. And I did ask them at the time, like, what um, do you think changed about this this observation? And the difference was the hot air and the cold air, so refraction. And uh, my floor isn't as flat as what I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, I saw you have a couple of videos basically establishing the flatness of your floor, but it's not. It's no. not at all. Yeah, okay. So lack of rigor in the experiments led you to believe your results kind of contradicted or brought into question the shape. Yeah, definitely. So one thing you struggled with, which was how does the moon illuminate? So you were searching for an alternative explanation, but why? What, what about the concept of the moon reflecting sunlight didn't work for you? Well, I think it's more that you want to kind of explain it in a different way to the globe, because if you're trying to defend flat Earth, you need to come up with a different explanation. And therefore, I was trying to come up with a different explanation. And also, the 3D thinking, you look at the moon in the sky and then you look at the sun, and because the sun isn't exactly opposite or... I mean, you've got this thing called the Terminator illusion and things like that, and if you're not thinking in 3D space as well as the Earth turning then it's going to lead you to conclusions that it's not lit by the sun because it, if you've got the sun in one position and the moon in another position, it doesn't look like it's lit by the sun, but it actually is. It's just you not thinking, you know, three-dimensionally. Right. And even some people get confused and think that the, the the phases of the moon is actually caused by the, the shadow of the earth, and that's completely mistaken. Yeah, I definitely remember a time when I thought that. I mean, I was probably much younger, but I remember thinking that it seemed like the first logical conclusion before you actually learn what's actually causing it. Another one, I guess this falls under the same vein. You have to find an alternative explanation if you believe the Earth is flat. Gravity. It seems like basically every flat earther wants to deny gravity and find another explanation for why things fall down. Why does every flat earther feel the need to claim gravity isn't real? Would you say it's just because gravity doesn't work with the flat earth? Well, I'm not sure about everybody else, but for me, that's the reason I got into Flat Earth. So I came across a video. I think it might have been a V-source video, Why Things Fall Down. I came across that it was bending space-time. And I, I thought, I'm a mass. I can't bend space and time because, oh, you know, it just seems like wooey. Yeah. And, like, um, I didn't believe it. So then it was like, well, I have to find an alternative. And for me, it was like, I realized that helium balloons are less dense than air and everything... I started to look at different densities and realized that less dense goes up, more dense goes down. So for me, it was like, I call it relative density disequilibrium. And yeah. then I looked into this and I typed in uh, YouTube, density is just gravity. And I came across Eric DeBay and then obviously I found his 200 proofs and found everybody else. And then that's how I got into Flat Earth. You questioned gravity first before finding Flat Earth. Okay. So yeah. I mean, RDD, I still see as correct in a way because less dense does go up and more dense does go down compared to the medium but only when you've on the floor when you're like free falling that doesn't work so it's obviously not rdd as a course right well and why would the more dense go down and not up right? well it's because of gravity the... isn't it if not gravity isn't a force it's still because of gravity but people don't understand that even i didn't it was the whole it's not a force therefore it can't do anything that's the old thing that got me to begin with like i feel like a lot of people get tripped up on that because you know general relativity you know, kind of explains gravity in a different way, as you said, like bending space time. And that's what creates the attractive force between masses. But it, I think it depends on context. I think when people say gravity is not a force, they're missing a lot of context. When you speak of gravity in the sense of Newton and things like that, it's still, it, it behaves exactly like a force. So it's not wrong to call it a force. And, you know, it, right, it but, depends but on but when context. you say it's not a force and then you've got f equals ma force equals mass times acceleration it's like well if it's not a force then it can't cause mass to accelerate according to newton's first law so then you kind of go through a whole rabbit hole of that but you don't understand the difference between a force and like an emergent force and things like that and until you understand the difference and actually dig into it 
you're never going to understand it. So, but people get really caught up in like, oh, gravity is not a force. It's like, uh, what's the, that doesn't change what it's doing. Exactly. You know, you call, call whatever you want, but it's still happening. Yeah, exactly. All right. So when you first found Flat Earth, it was from Flat Earth content, not the, the debunking content. Like, I remember the first time I heard of Flat Earth, I think it was from a Simon Dan video. Well, for me, it was global content, as in gravity is not a force, it's the bending and warping of space-time. Mm -hmm. And then sure. from that, I was I was like, no, mass doesn't warp space and time. It can't warp space and time. It was more of an incredulity. So then I tried to figure out another explanation, and then I just thought it was density. So then typing in gravity is just density, I came across Eric Debain, his 200 proofs right. and things like that, and then got into Flat Earth and found FTFE and Sleeping Warrior. Oh, so you found FTFE pretty early on. Yeah, it was him who was debunking the relative density disequilibrium, basically, but I didn't know it was called that at the time. It was only when I found FTFE that I realized that because he was debunking Sleeping Warrior. So when you saw Eric Dubay's 200 proofs and, and you first heard of the flat earth, how come not immediately dismiss it like so many people do? Well, it was the seeing too far. So you see too far. I didn't understand refraction. And because we see too far for the globe model, excluding refraction, because they always seem to exclude refraction. That was one of the reasons. And then it was, and then the speeds as well, when they said, oh, you're going around the sun at like 66,600 miles per hour and they're going around the galaxy at half a million miles per hour. I was like, you'd feel that speed, but I didn't realize that speed was actually um, something that you don't really feel. And it's actually acceleration that you feel. Exactly. Yeah. Right, easy to rebut that and just say, well, you're going 300 miles an hour in an airplane or 400 miles an hour and you don't feel it and only when you're taking off and landing, so. Yeah, but okay. I didn't understand that. Right, right, you need someone to explain that. It's like, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. So hadn't you come across Eric Dubé first, do you think that if you had come across a video like I did, like the Flat Earth Fail compilations or something along those lines before getting Eric Dubé, you think if Simon Dan or someone, you know, MC Tune or FTFP, if you had gotten more exposure to that content first, how do you think that would have played out? Well, you can only really guess, can't you? Well, I guess it might have played a difference, but I can't really say for sure. I mean, I did find the flat earth content first and it did make a lot of sense and the speeds didn't make sense to me because I couldn't understand how you couldn't feel these speeds. But that's because I didn't understand that you don't actually feel speed, so... It and then the scene too far and that. But if they had have found the MC2 and Simon down first, maybe because of their understanding and explanations, maybe I would have, you know, had a more of a physics and science background to be able to rebut that. But at the time, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder. I, I think that's very possible, but we'll never know, I guess. Three years ago, you made a video called Proving Einstein Wrong Again. Can you explain your mindset in making that video? How is it that someone such as yourself can believe, and I feel this way about the flat earthers in general, they can believe that they've actually proven Einstein wrong. And in turn, also all of the world's most brilliant and experienced sci uh, scientists past and present, instead of just thinking, wow, this doesn't make sense. There must be something I'm not understanding. Let me go ask a professor or someone who knows better what I'm doing wrong. Well, at the minute, I don't know what that video actually is, but uh, what video I actually did. I remember the title, but I don't remember the actual content of the video. But yeah, like you should really think to yourself, maybe I'm mistaken rather than, you know, the geniuses kind of thing, because that's why I think Einstein was pretty genius compared to most of us. But at the time, you don't think like that. You just think what what you think makes logical sense to you. And it's like, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's like it makes logical sense to you, so you're correct, so they must be wrong because it's logical to you at the time, but, but that's because of your lack of understanding of certain topics. I guess that falls into like um, Kruger. That's basically what, what that means, right? So failure to recognize that you don't know all that much and uh, you view yourself as on the same level as uh, Einstein, I suppose. Well, I think I've done in Kruger. I mean, even chat GPT basically taught me that. <laughs> Would it be fair to say basically all flat earthers, especially if they're honest and they're not just lying, if they honestly believe the earth is flat, did they suffer from, from some degree of Dunning-Kruger? Yeah, definitely. They, 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 they know things that they don't actually know. And then they think that they're going to change the worldview with their views. And it's like, well, actually, if you learned the topic and you learned these certain subjects, you'd actually know that you're wrong right now and you could actually correct yourself. How 
hard was it to admit to yourself? And what was that process like? Did it happen overnight or was it a gradual doubt questioning into, oh, okay, now I get it. It was a gradual thing. Yeah. It was um, hard for me to, to change the way my mind thought, even when I came to the realization it was a globe. When I pictured flat earth in my, um, the earth in my head, I'd picture flat earth in my head. So like when, when I picture the earth, I'd picture flat earth, even though a part of me, even though all of me pretty much knew it was a globe, I'd still picture the flat earth because I'd pictured it for so long. Mm. And it's, it's like, it was a hard thing. It took probably a few months for me to actually fully get on board with it being a globe, even though I knew it was a globe, it still took time to process that. I bet. Yeah. How much harder was it? Because you, you know, you're on the internet. Um, you made your flat earth belief well known to many people. Did you not care or did it make it harder to admit to, to yourself and to the world? Rather, you know, it's someone in your position, I think a lot of people do, they just go on denying it because especially if you're out there. Well, the thing is, I was always after the truth. So for me, it was like, it, it doesn't matter if I'm wrong or not. Like, And it shouldn't matter if you're wrong. If you're wrong, you're wrong. It doesn't really matter. Do you know what I mean? It's like, just it's you you're after the truth so if you're wrong you're wrong it, it doesn't really matter <laughs> change your mind and be right from now on exactly Ex exactly yeah but for me it's like because i i always su suffered with social anxiety i still do for me it, it's hard for me to even believe that i'm even online saying this stuff so it's like the fact that i even thought that much about it that i thought that i had to be online to say this stuff and then to to admit that i'm wrong it didn't really yeah, I'm wrong, but what does it matter if you're wrong? If you're wrong, you're wrong. Nobody's perfect all the time. Nobody's right all the time. You get things wrong. It doesn't really matter. You just admit you're wrong. Yeah, I totally agree. I think I mentioned that in my interview with Fatsoid where, you know, yeah, I've been wrong before about other things and not about the shape of the earth. But yeah, and then you just have to admit it to yourself and move on. And it is what it is. It's, you know, it's not the end of the world. Exactly. Nobody's perfect. There's a lot of debates happening, you know, FTFE and MC2 do debates along with many others. Were you watching the debates a few months back when you were still a flat earther? Yeah, I was watching the debates and I was a part of the debate circle. I've done debates with FTFE and MC2 and people, but yeah, but you know, I still watch them. And then when you watch them as well and you watch the flat earthers you, and then you, you understand what they've got wrong because you've learned things, it also see, makes you understand how they're wrong. And then when you try to correct them, it it makes that position of the globe more stronger. It's the same with the conspiracy theories. So, like, I've had conspiracy theories against me saying I'm AI and things. It's like I'm not an AI. And that also makes you believe that these people are more um, towards the conspiracy side. Like, that, um, mm -hmm. it makes your, like, uh, evidence in the globe more stronger and your faith in the flat earth even less. Because it's like, well, if you think that about me, that I'm an AI, then... Why should I believe anything else you say, really? Yep, I've been uh, I've been accused of being a shill for BlackRock because I made a BlackRock conspiracy video and an Illuminati shill. When you were watching as a flat earther, how did you feel at the end of the debate? Did you, like many flat earthers, feel the flat earth won the debate? Or do you think that the globe earthers are actually changing the mind of the audience? For me, a lot of the times I did think the flat earthers won the debate, but that was due to my lack of understanding. But um, there was times when they debated certain flat earthers when I thought, you know, the, the globers have come with more evidence and they've got more substance behind them than what the flat earthers have. And when the flat earthers also turn into the attack mode, it makes their position even weaker. Do you think that a few portion of the audience actually feels that way, like secretly or not, notice that the globe earthers maybe made a good point there and this is a bad response from the flat earther? Yeah, I think the audience do see that, but... It depends whether they have a bias as well. So if you're like in flat earth and you have a bias for flat earth, they'll try and defend the flat earther even if they know the global has a good point because a part of you wants it to be flat because you're defending that. So it's like if you're defending that, you want to kind of root for that. So you try and defend it any way you can. What was your opinion of the quote debunkers while you're a flat earther? I mean, so many flat earthers think they're either shills or lying i've heard you call craig a liar a while back he's definitely been wrong on occasions i wouldn't uh, think he's lying 
But did you think a lot of the, the globe earthers were lying? I thought a lot of them was liars. Like I did call FTFA, bless him, a liar and things. Called him out on certain things, got proven wrong on certain things. I never thought anybody was shills or paid off. I just thought that there was lying. Like FTFA, I did call him a liar and I apologise for that. I hold my hands up and he has proven me wrong. But um, yeah, I never called them shills or paid off, just... I did think that was lying at the time, but that's, again, due to my misunderstandings, thinking I know it when I don't know it. Gotcha. Okay. More recently, a few months back, you were on Flatoid's show. And I keep bringing up Flatoid because he's been on my show. I'm actually speaking with him tomorrow uh, on his show. Yo, Flurs. We get along just fine, uh, even though we disagree. You were on his show a few months back, and you were very cordial with him. This is back when you were very much leaning Glober. And you guys got along, even though you're disagreeing on basically everything. What's changed? Because lately, you've been giving him such a hard time. You've made videos such as Dishonest Dirtzoid. Perhaps you can explain this, you dishonest That's what you brought the hyper up for, Flatzoid. You dishonest It isn't my fault you say dumb shit. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> what, what it, <laughs> it, it's quite funny, but... Uh, can, can you tell me what's going on there? How come such a, an attack going on towards Flat? Well, you see, the thing is, me and Flat Zoid always got along. We was always like quite close, like friends, I, I consider us. And I was mm -hmm. moderator on his channel. And then as soon as I started going back towards the globe, he was like, oh, I'm okay with that. Like, you know, we, it's okay to disagree, which it is okay to disagree. But a part of me thinks that now was a ruse because like, Every other ex Earther that's gone back to the globe has automatically been cut off. So it's like, because people are calling that out, he didn't want to be liable as that kind of thing. So he tried to play it out like that wasn't the case. And like, he, he, he was allowing it so long as me being a moderator and things like that. But then as soon as I started more disagreeing with him and things that he couldn't argue with, he was like, oh, you're just a troll. Oh, you're this, just this, you know what I mean? Calling me names. And then he'd poke at me and poke at me. Oh, she's dishonest. She's a troll. She's this, she's that. And it was like, you know, when you can like poke a bear for so long, but then they're going to bite you back. It's like, well, you want to keep calling me out and calling me names and calling me dishonest and a troll or a liar or this and that. I'm going to bite back eventually. Do you know what I mean? And that's what happened basically. And he, he took my moderator off me and I got timed out and things and the, the, the names that he was calling and that. It's like, well, if you want to be like that, I can be like that too. I have no problem still being your friend and disagreeing. I don't think friends can not be friends even if they disagree. You know what I mean? We can still be friends even if we disagree. But he wanted to keep calling me names and keep poking at me and then be nasty towards me. Well, you know, I can only take that for so long before I end up biting back. Sounds like maybe you think it was a little disingenuous that he was just doing it to preserve his own reputation. Yeah, it was basically. That's the only reason he didn't take the moderator and things off me straight away. He's, he's, he had to <laughs> act like it was, I, I turned into a troll, I turned into this dishonest person, I turned into this liar kind of thing in order to then remove the moderator, especially because he had people complaining to him. Why well, have you got a globe earther as a moderator and that? And it's like, because of that, eventually you have to take it. Everybody already called it that it was, it was going to happen. He was going to take my moderator, all right? There was people mm -hmm. that already called that. But he wanted to act like it wasn't just because I went to the globe. It was because I was a troll now. That's what he wanted to act like. Do you think he believes the earth is flat, truly? No, I don't. I did you, at one you... point. But there's too yeah. much dishonesty and too much lies. And like I've done videos about Coriolis for him and even broke down the maths of Coriolis for him. And he still denies that and goes with his dishonest answer like oh there should be a thousand miles per hour drift at the equator and neil degrasse tyson says this even though i broke down the maths of the neil degrasse, neil degrasse tyson thing where we were it was the uh football kick and i broke down the maths for that and the equator the um the equator the um the latitude of things that that was on and he still denies that it's it's like you you can't be honest at that even even i've said to him okay well if i give you a question and i say well you you determine you calculate the Coriolis for me. He didn't he denies doing that. And even me and Wolfie we've been saying, okay, let's do a de uh, debate about flight plans and things. And he's like, oh no no, I'm not doing that. It, he is <laughs> dishonest. He, he's not. I don't think he's a real player for anymore now. It's just a grift, I think. Wow, wow. Okay. What leads me to believe they're not all just lying and grifters is because you can see, like you said, when you're watching the debates, you can see the flaws in their logic. 
for their mistakes and misunderstandings of science. I'm sure sometimes it's intentional obfuscation and, and things like that, but I think there is a lot of misunderstanding. I think that's a huge part of it. I think they do recognize they're wrong about certain things. I think it's human nature to kind of push that out of your mind and move on to something else. But, I mean, you know better than anyone because you've been there. But when you've you read that many times and you can do your own research and you can actually get up these calculators for things like Coriolis or anything like that, and you've you, you can actually do your own research. You've been corrected time and time and time again. And nobody's agreeing with you who actually studies this and who actually teaches this. Why would you think you're right? That's actually one thing that brought me back to the globe earth as well. It was like, do I think I'm more intelligent than all these people who have studied it and teach it and actually do these experiments and do the demonstrations? Like, do I think I'm more intelligent than these people? No, I don't. So yeah. that that was all my, all, also a realisation for me that, hold on a second, you know what I mean? You have got Dunning-Kruger because you're not more intelligent than all these people. So why do you think you are? I think they do think they are in some cases. It's good that you recognize you're not, or at least not on, not in the subject matter. Yeah, um, exactly. Looking back, how do you view your experience? It was at least a couple of years where you went from indifferent to a flat earther and back. Uh, part of my question is what have you learned? But aside from a lot of science, what have you learned about belief and conspiracy theorists and what is the best way to get through to someone who's under this misapprehension and misunderstanding? But honestly, I've tried with people. Um, it's not an easy thing to do. I think you have to question yourself and you have to look at yourself and be like, am I being biased? Am I ignoring this piece of evidence? This piece of evidence says one thing and although you don't want to admit it, it, it does and to ignore that is to be dishonest. So you have to kind of look at yourself and be honest with yourself and be like, well, there is this piece of evidence. And even though it, it is against flat earth and it's for the globe, you have to acknowledge it and be like, you know, th this is what it is. And you have to acknowledge that. But as a flat earther, you try and keep that bias and you try and push it away and be like, no, -uh, basically. But um, like I said, chat GPT was a good one for me. I, I did ask it about the flat earth and things like that. And, it basically did tell me that I had cognitive dissonance and to, you know, deal with these and to, it, it gave me certain things to do, like to try and find evidence for my belief or to accept the evidence against my belief and things like that. And I did take it to advice, you know, and it was right. Chat GPT That's did it. actually help me in that regard because I did have cognitive dissonance and I didn't realize it until it was basically spelled out for me. That's interesting because in my conversation with Creaky, I asked him, how is AI and ChatGPT, for, for example, going to affect the way people think? So it sounds like you think that ChatGPT is going to be more a force for good and truth. Part of me wants to say yeah, but a part of me also wants to say no, because I also did ask ChatGPT about RDD, Relative Density Disequilibrium, and it gave me some totally wrong answers. It was telling me it was for the reason for the galaxy formations, things like that, but it's not. What did you ask it besides that? Because you mentioned it helped you get over your cognitive dissonance and all that. What were you asking it that allowed it to help you? I was asking it things like, well, why do people believe it's a glow? Why do people believe it's a flat earth? And it was like, it depends on how they're brought up and things that they're exposed to and lack of evidence for the flat earth and things like that. And telling you that basically it's misunderstandings and cognitive dissonance that I had because it was certain things that I had. I said, well, it's flat because of this or that. And it was telling me why I was wrong. And I did actually do a video with a chat GPT. I think it was about the cognitive dissonance things. And it was saying, well, if you can't beat the evidence to then find evidence for the flat earth, basically. And I couldn't do that because the evidence isn't there for the flat earth. So, you, so you're willing to trust chat GPT. I think someone who's, who's really in deep might say, oh, it's just programmed chill or, you know, why would I trust this? It's just, it's just a Glober and computerized Glober, stuff like that. But you were willing to accept it as kind of a nonpartisan, um, all-knowing <laughs> encyclopedia? Well, I'll be honest. It is biased, obviously, because it's biased towards the globe and it is flat earth. But what it was saying made a lot of sense and it was like a self-reflection. So then I could self-reflect on myself from what it was saying for certain things. It, w it wasn't saying, oh, you shouldn't believe in flat earth because of this, this, and this. It was saying, well, if you believe in flat earth and the evidence is saying something different, because it was also a um, cognitive dissonance that I was suffering, 
And it was saying you, you're suffering cognitive dissonance. And if you're suffering cognitive dissonance, then this is what you should do. And if the evidence is saying one thing and you think it's saying another thing, find evidence for what you basically believe it is. And I couldn't do it. One thing about beliefs is that your beliefs are not really by choice, right? They're, if my arguments are compelling and are strong enough, but you can lie to yourself, but you really can't help but believe what I'm trying to convince you of if my arguments are good enough. But you'll still end up with cognitive dissonance in the end, even if you don't want to admit it to yourself. I like to get people's opinion on whether a flat earther or the flat earthers are honest or liars. So I'll give you a couple names if it's all right. We've already yep. talked about flat Floyd. We believe he's completely dishonest at this point and has been convinced and is not, not willing to admit it. Let's go with Nathan Oakley. What do you think uh, his situation is? I think he's dishonest, but he portrays himself online different to offline. You know what he's like offline? I've spoken to him offline, and he was different to what he is online. And I've also been told to speak to him offline, which is why I spoke to him offline, because he's different online from somebody who knows him. So, yeah, he's different online than what he is offline. That leads you to believe that he is not fully honest about his claims to believe the Earth is flat? He's not fully honest, no. He, he knows that what he says is basically BS, but he still says what he says. Hmm. Why do you think that is? Well, you can only be debunked so many times and to to still say the same things, even though you know it's wrong. Now, he, 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 I think he's just a grifter. Just a grifter, yeah. Which is a shame because I did actually like him, but it's the same with Black Dude. I liked him, but then you start to see the real truth of people. So it's like, you know, you've got to be honest with yourself at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine, you know, you were an honest flat earther, and then once you realize that others aren't, you have a lot of disdain for them, for that. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say I have disdain for them. It's just you wish they'd do better. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's a hard one because you still like them on one way, but it's like you just wish they'd be more honest. Do you know what I mean? You want them to be more honest. Yeah, you want them to be more honest because you did like them at a point, but I'm thinking of more like Eric Dubé. You said he played a big part, especially his 200 proofs, and basically led you to believe something that's not true. Wouldn't you have yeah. some disdain for him, especially if he knew he was lying? Wouldn't that make uh, you pretty angry with him? I've only ever had a couple of conversations with Eric Dubé through, um, not never voice chat, but through like uh, comments and things. Um, I wouldn't say I have disdain for him. It's more... He misunderstands these. I, I I don't know if I even think he's a grifter. I think he's he's somebody that hard, that's hard to reach. He he doesn't really do many voice debates things, and I don't know if he really knows his misunderstandings because he doesn't put himself out there like that much. I don't know. I mean, what I went through as a flat earther, it, it's not easy being a flat earther. I'll be honest, it's not. So why yeah. anybody would do that other than the money? If you're getting money from me, I mean, I was never monetized. I'm still not. Unless you're getting money from it, I don't see why you'd put yourself through that, to be honest. Yeah, I believe a lot of flat earthers started out as honest flat earthers, and then, as as you did, and then just refused to be honest with themselves as they, so they remain flat earthers, but a lot of them have doubts and just, or they know better, and they're not willing to admit it. And to be clear, what I meant about disdain and Eric debate, I meant disdain for him if you found out that he was always a liar. And so that he basically tricked, is lying to everyone and tricking people into believing things. If he honestly believes the earth is flat and he's putting that out there and uh, just happened to be wrong, I, I don't think anyone should have to stain for him for that. But what I meant was if it turned out that he was just lying this whole time for whatever reason. I still wish the best for everybody. <laughs> I, I don't really wish hate on anybody or anything like that. I just wish they'd be better people, even if they are deliberately lying. I, I just wish they'd be honest and be better people rather than hate on them. But yeah, it, it's it's not easy being a flat earther and that if you are really putting yourself out there and you know, or you think you know what you're saying is true, because it, because you do get attacked for it. It's Absolutely. it's not easy. It's not easy. You know what I mean? Does your circle of friends and family do they know or did they know that you were into flat earth? Did you bring it up at parties and get-togethers? Yeah, actually, one of my family member was starting to fall down the rabbit hole of flat earth as I was getting out, and I was like. No, stop, you know what I mean? That was on about the uh, moon landing and the communication between the moon landing. How can you communicate between the moon and Earth? And 
things like that. And I was trying to explain it to them and I was starting to fall down that rabbit hole. And I was like, look, look up Dave for Keegan. Look up um, something on the way to the moon. A, f- a funny thing happened on the way to the moon. I says he debunks that because I was looking into a funny things happened to- on the way to the moon. I says Dave okay. McKeegan debunks all that. Like so I was like, look into this channel. I sent him the link to the channel and things like that. I was like, trust me, it's not flat. Don't fall down that rabbit hole. Did they end up looking up Dave and escaping? Hopefully. I mean, they haven't mentioned anything since to me. But if they did, I'd still bring up, you know, the arguments against it now. And I I feel like I could argue against them more now. But at the time, I was trying to convince them of Flat Earth before that. And then they started falling into it as I was getting out of Flat Earth. And it was like, no, stop, you know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jaren, you know, of course, in the documentary had that eye-opening result. Interesting. (laughs) Interesting. I asked Dan this. What do you think? Does Jaren, does he believe the Earth is flat or no longer and it's just unwilling to admit it publicly i'm not sure about jaron but what i will say about him is he does seem like a an okay guy he seems polite he doesn't seem like a lot of flat earthers um i'm not sure if he believes it or not because again he has the money issue so he is getting money for saying what he says and that's a hard thing for people to leave behind if they're gonna switch sides that they've got to worry about that loss of money and support so I'm not sure with Jerem, but I will say he seems like a decent guy. I agree. Yep. Flat Earth Dave. Honest or dishonest? Not sure. I've never spoke to him. I couldn't really say what he does is dishonest, but is that intentional? That's the question. Because like, if you don't check your sources, then you could believe something. But if you believe something and you put it out there, does that make you a liar or dishonest? Mm. Not if you believe it, really, because you believe it. So... I can't really say about um, Dave, as I said, Professor Dave, and I can't really say about Dave Boyce because I don't really know, but he is selling an app. So again, it's money making. So is that a reason why? It's hard to tell with the people who make money. It's interesting you said about believing it, does it make you a liar? This is exactly the disagreement MC Tune and I had about. He defined people who were saying things that weren't true that believed it, and he, was, he, he referred to them as a liar. I said, is, isn't that just someone who's wrong? And, you know, he's like, well, I guess it depends on how you define liar. Well, for yeah, me, a liar it... has to know that they're lying. If, if you I, believe yeah. you're telling the truth, then I don't think you're a liar. I mean, technically you're That's saying a... the wrong thing, which is a lie, but you're not meaning to lie because you don't know it's a lie. So you're not really a liar. I, re- I agree. Exactly. That's, that was my, my point. point. You know, that's basically what the difference between a liar and someone who's just wrong is. That one person knows it, one person doesn't. How did your involvement in the fighter community affect or impact your personal life and relationships? And did, did it at all? Did you know any flat earthers in real life? And what happened to those relationships once you were no longer a flat earther? I never knew any flat earthers in real life. Um, I did talk to a girl on the train once, and she was just basically laughing at me when I was trying to tell her about the flat earth. With me and my partner, he was just like, well, you shut up about it already, because I just kept going on and on and on about it. And it was just like, it's like, yeah, in one ear at the other with him. Like, luckily he never, you know, uh, like some people have left each other because of it, but luckily he never did. But he did get sick of me talking about it constantly, basically, because it was basically all I ever talked about. I can imagine. Yeah. So I did, you did make at least one video I watched. I'm assuming it was him speaking to where he yeah. was, um, he was just like, what difference does it make? What shape the earth is? And he said, you know, who cares if it's cube shaped and. And your response was, well, I care. I, I want to know where I live in the world. So did he ever try to help you discover it, or was he just more hands-off to your thing? He was more hands-off. He, he doesn't really care. He doesn't really have any scientific background or any physics background. Like, he could never say I was wrong because he doesn't have that background. But he just, he just doesn't care. And to be honest, hats off to him because it, it doesn't really matter if it's, if it's a a sphere or flat or, you know, dodecahedron or whatever, it it doesn't change anything about your day-to-day life, so. Yep, that's true about so many things. Looking back at, at some of your older videos, I got the impression that you were maybe at least a little bit of a conspiracy theorist or conspiratorially minded. I mean, you also made videos about filming potential UFOs. What is your mindset as far as conspiracies? Do you believe the moon landing was fake or did you believe the moon landing was fake? UFOs, things like that. Not that UFOs are necessarily super conspiratorial, but what is your mindset then and now? Well, before Flat Earth, I was all aliens and 9-11. And I used to watch that Jesse Ventura. And he 
was pretty convincing at the time. Now it's mm. different because obviously now I see things differently. But at the time, yeah, I was very conspiratorial. And like my partner actually says to me, he says you jump from one topic to the next. Because I, I was always from one conspiracy, Aliens, Area 51, Roswell, all that, to the next topic. Because like 9-11 and Jesse Ventura and all that stuff to the next. Like I've always kind of been like, I have like an obsession about one thing. And then it jumps to an obsession about something else. And he's right about that. That's true. What about now? Do you have more experience and you see through and this doesn't sound as compelling to you? Is that is that true? Yeah, that's true. Like I don't see it the way that I used to see. But now I've got back into UFOs and aliens a bit. I'm still more skeptical of it, but I'm again more open minded compared to where I used to be with Flat Earth. With Flat Earth, it was like aliens don't exist. They can't exist wow. because it's flat and there's no space basically like that. And aliens don't exist. Mm-hmm. We're not special, but we we was we was put here on a flat earth and there isn't no life anywhere else, basically. They never found life here or there and we're it basically, but now I'm more open minded, but now I'm more interdimensional aliens rather than aliens from Mars or something or from another galaxy. Oh really? Because you know, mainstream science basically says statistically there almost certainly are aliens somewhere out there. They don't have to be from another dimension. Whether it's you know, the next solar system over or uh, the next galaxy over, they should be out there. But if they're visiting us, then the That's speed of light is, is like a limit kind of thing and it's a bit too far for them to get here and things like that. So then now I'm more interdimensional aliens, not saying I believe it, but I'm open minded to it. Yeah, if you don't know what's po- what's possible millions of years from now if you advance technology. So who knows? Exactly. Yeah. But uh, it, it seems unlikely that we're alone in the universe. A video of seven months ago, you said uh, that you asked Bob Nodell why you asked him why they would lie i think it was referring to was it the moon or the shape of the earth but i remember you asked him a question like why would they lie and his answer was uh, according to you to steal your soul yeah you remember that yeah i remember him telling me that pretty much as soon as i met him pretty much i uh i was uh, skeptical like uh, at first of flat earth but i was intrigued by it and like I said, it made more sense in the globe to me because I didn't understand the physics and the science. So I did ask him, well, why would they lie about the shape of the earth? And he did say, God rest his soul, he did say um, it was to hide our soul and to hide God, basically, and to steal our soul. And what did you make of that at the time? Were you like, wow, that's a shit answer? Or did you, did you find that compelling and acceptable? I, I accepted it as an answer, not necessarily 100% behind it, but as a possibility. Wow. Yeah, no, I don't believe it. And to be honest, you couldn't hide God and things like that. And he, it's hide, hiding the shape of the earth or lying about the shape of the earth. Why would that steal your soul? It doesn't make sense, to be honest. You also made a video called Why There Has to Be a Creator. I don't know how long ago that was. I think it was early on. Do you still believe there has to be a creator? I do, unless somebody can come up with an explanation differently. For me, it's like, it, this was actually around the time that I found Flat Earth, probably a bit before. It was somebody named Blue Beetle, and um, he told me to look into, it was even infinite regression or finite regression. And I looked into that, and he, he'd send me a video. The video isn't actually available at the minute because I'm actually doing a video on that for somebody else. But, um, yeah, it was finite regression or infinite regression. And uh, basically, if today, if there was a fine, an infinite day before today, then today could never come. So the universe had to have a beginning. And obviously they say it has a beginning because of the Big Bang. So if it had a beginning, then something must have created the beginning. So that makes me believe in a creator. And there was another point, but it escapes me right now. Oh, okay. it's, it's, it's that all this around us. If you look around you and you see everything around you, all this has to come from somewhere. It can't just come from nothing. So... I suppose the globe also have the, has the um, bubble expansion and the contraction theory, where it expands and then contracts. So there's actually a name for it, but I forget what it is right now. I think it was the, the big crunch, but yeah, I know what you mean. I, that's not a very popular theory anymore. No, that's one of the theories that they had for it, but to me, yeah. it still has to be created. Like, it has to come from somewhere. And I do believe in the spiritual realm, so. Do you believe in the spirit? Do you believe, so do you believe in ghosts? See, this is the thing. I used to think there was ghosts because I've had like supernatural things happen to me and I used to think there was ghosts. 
because obviously you you put just brought up believing in ghosts and poltergeists, or that's how you you know the supernatural kind of thing, or the things that you can't explain as. But now mm-hmm. I think there could just be aliens, or interdimensional aliens, or angels, or demons, or devils, or you know anything basically. You don't know hundred percent they are a ghost. So I'm not it's entirely a... sure. Yeah, it's this sounds a little bit familiar. And then when you, when you can't explain something, maybe there's just an explanation. Because a lot of people like to fill in things they don't know with either religion or ghosts, or they'll see something that they can't explain, and therefore it's a ghost. Maybe there's just a lack of understanding. And in this case, it still could be physics, but it could be biology. It could be a, a lot of things. Do you not see it that way? I do. There's definitely something. I just don't know what it is. It's like, for example, the other day I had, a, I had this hallucination if you want to call it that or a vision and it was this black and white curtain it was underneath my table and then within two hours my mom told me that she'd actually got a black and white cut and she sent me this picture and it was underneath a table and it was the exact same cut that i seen underneath my table that was like a it was like a vision it was there one second gone the next it's like well why have i seen that and now you're telling me you've got that exact cut that i'd seen because i even said oh is it white by the mouth and black by the eyes and it was exactly the same Wow. And, th- and it's like the one time as well, I also had this, it's, it's like, you know how you can hear your thoughts, so you can, it's like your thoughts have a voice, almost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was like this, like that, that come into my head, and it told me something's going to happen at yours when you're gone. And then I went to my mom's, and then when I got back, I didn't realise anything had happened, and my partner come back home from work that night, and he was like, where's my bike? I said, what do you mean? And he says, my bike's gone. He says, why, where are you hiding it? I said, I put it nowhere. <laughs> And then actually somebody had stole his bike while I'd gone and something actually told me that something was going to happen at mine while I was gone and it did. It's like there's certain things that happen that you can't explain and you right. don't know the reason to that, like whether it's God or a ghost or, you know, a guardian angel or aliens or the creator or what it is, but there is definitely something because I yeah, can't explain yeah. those things, but that happened. I've never had anything that spectacular like the cat example happen to me. So I'm sure if it did, if it did, I, I would be even more convinced. Well, it freaks you out because it's like, well, why are you telling me this or why are you showing me this? Because it's like, what, what am I meant to do with this information? Like, it, it just doesn't make sense. It's like, why? It, it's crazy when you think about it. Like, most people would think you're crazy. Even my partner, when I said to him, I said, I've just seen a cat under there. He just looked at me like I'm crazy. I said, call it a hallucination or whatever you want. And then within two hours, my mom was on the phone telling me she's got a, she's got a black and white cat. Did you tell him you, you saw it before you spoke to your mom? Yeah, as soon as I seen it, I said, oh, I've just seen a black and white cat under there. And then two hours later, I was on the phone to my mom. I said, guess what? I said, my mom's just told me she's got a black and white cat. I couldn't explain it, but it happened. Yeah, that's super random that you pictured a black and white cat under a table. I mean, who knows? Yeah, I'm not even going to speculate. It's unexplainable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah there's, there's no way to prove anything there. No, that's there's int- not. Yeah, all right. So less conspiratorially minded, but still spiritually minded to some degree okay definitely because there's things that happen that i can't explain were you particularly religious growing up or you know a lot of flat earthers do seem to be religious there's a correlation there you were not no well i believed in a creator until i was about nine or ten and then i thought well if there's a creator or a god why would he let all these bad things happen? Because I realized there was a lot of bad going on in the world. And then I was like, well, why would he let all these bad things happen if there was a creator? Why wouldn't he make everything good? So then yeah. at that point, I became an atheist. And it was only until I met, well, spoke to that blue beetle online and then found out about the finite regression or the infinite regression, I forget the name, uh, that then I came back to a creator. And then Alan Watts as well. But he doesn't believe in a creator, but he helped me with my fear of death because I always had a fear of death. So for me, as well, believing in a creator and a God helps me with that. Sure. I think that's that's probably a big part of it. It's so appealing about religion to so many people. You know, it is comforting. Definitely, if you think there's an afterlife. Because I used to think from when I was a child and I, I was an atheist, I used to think when she died, that's it, lights out, you know, there's nothing kind of thing. And that's a horrible feeling, really, and a horrible belief to have. So I'd rather believe in an afterlife than believe in nothing at all. Nothing at all does sound awful but at the same time nothing at all is is is, it's the same as imagining you know 19 we were nothing at all at that time it wasn't so horrible so alan watts basically says yeah you don't remember before you was born so why are you scared if there's nothing after yeah if you you don't believe in an afterlife it's that's the best you get your channel 
did you lose a lot of viewership or did you, did you actually gain, I mean, I don't think I always started watching your channel until you were already on the globe side. Did you start growing or slow your growth when you came at Clover? I think I started growing, but I think it was slow. I'm not really sure. I think I had like at least a thousand when I was still a flat earther and I think I'm up to like 1,700 or something now. I, I, to be honest, the subscriber count never really bothered me. Like I said, I, I don't make any money off it. it. It's nothing to me really. It was just putting my opinions out there and, you know, that's it basically. It was never an income for me. It still isn't an income for me, so it doesn't really matter to me. Why make that first video then just to put yourself out there? Well, it was because, like I said, I came across gravity and relative density disequilibrium, less dense up, more dense down. And then I was talking to people in the chat that actually remember who there was. Uh, I can't remember the name. I was talking to him and I was like saying, I think I can explain it better than what Eric Debay did because I sent him an Eric Debay video originally. And I was like, oh, you've sent me an Eric Debay video. I was like, yeah. And do you know what I mean? But that they was like, well, it's Eric Dubai. Why should I believe that kind of thing? I know Eric Dubai. Why should I believe him? I'm like, well, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? But I'll try and explain it differently for you kind of thing. And then that's how I got into it, basically. So you were trying to convince somebody? Yeah, pretty much. How did that turn out? Not good. Uh, unsuccessful, thankfully? Unsuccessful, yeah. But I, I, I tried my best, you know what I mean, at the time, but... All right. That's a really good place to end. Rachie, it's great talking with you. Thanks for doing this. I hope we can do it again sometime. Okie dokie. Love to, lovely talking to you too. All right. I hope you all enjoyed that. If you did, don't forget to let me know by hitting those like and subscribe buttons and checking out my other videos. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.